Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Benjamin Bill. I'm a partner at CMS Real Estate in France, and I'm very happy to share a moment with Svetlana Shagorotsky, who's a senior investment manager at Deca Immobilien in charge of the French uh, market. As a quick introduction on Deka Immobilien, um, Deka is a German investment fund which manages about 42 billion euros of real estate assets, uh, mainly on, on all continents, but mainly in Europe and in Northern America. Um, you have about 7,000 tenants throughout the world, and last year had a transaction volume of 5.7 billion euro only for the year 2020. So we're very happy that you, sh that you share with us this moment. And uh, Svetlana, um, I would like to have your view on uh, investment strategies of Deca Immobilien, especially for the French market, which you have. And uh, once you've given us your investment strategy, maybe you could also tell us if this COVID crisis has in one way or another impacted such investment strategy. Um, yeah, uh, Benjamin, thank you for the introduction. And um, um, yeah, and it's uh, absolutely interesting the, the investment strategy of Deca. And as you, um, I mean, Deca is known as a long-term uh, investment uh, or a long-term investor. So, uh, in, in fact, our strategy does not really change during the crisis because um, we are always targeting um, long-term investments. And um, over the last 50 years, this is the 50 years of the experience Deca has is um, we try to um, set up a portfolio which is more or less crisis stable, meaning we are looking for a very good location, uh, long-term tenants, long-term uh, lease agreements. And um, yeah, this is one of the reasons why our strategy does not really change during the crisis. Mm -hmm. um, it's true that we um, we are even more focused on, on our main criteria and try to really follow the, the rules and, and the strategy we, we, we have, um, because this also uh, helped us during the last crisis we had. So uh, we experienced, especially for example, for our portfolio in France, that um, um, good location and long-term leases helped us to survive and to keep the values stable mm -hmm. for our funds. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why um, we, we, yeah, we do believe that also this is the, um, the key for the success mm -hmm. of, our, of our funds and the portfolios we do have. <coughs> So uh, thank you very much. So 2020 was, of course, a very special year, I think, for every one of us on a personal level. But we're here to talk about <laughs> the professional life. Um, so could you maybe uh, tell us what uh, you did uh, in 2020? What types of transactions you have done uh, during such uh, a COVID crisis? And if whilst you have been doing that uh, uh, transactions, if you encountered any difficulties which could be uh, related to the COVID, um, it would be good to, to, to have your view on, on what you've done in 2020 and the impact on negotiation, on visits, on discussions, on pricing maybe, if you could maybe explain what you've done in 2020. Um, yeah, sure. Um, I mean, we've done a lot in, in, in 2020, to, uh, and so it was a big surprise for us that, um, that the year was uh, was very active, and um, we had uh, the opportunity uh, to to purchase um, uh, several buildings, especially in, in France, 
And um, yeah, I mean, for sure, uh, during, in March last year, we, we, when, when the lockdown started in France and in Germany and more or less all over Europe, we were under exclusivity for, for building and we just started our due diligence. So um, it, um, uh, it, it was quite, quite challenging because without traveling and without being able to, to um, be on site, to be present, um we yeah it, it was it was a challenge for us but at the end it worked out and it, it worked pretty well i mean um sure there it, it's always a question of kind of the pro of profile of the building you're purchasing but uh for from our point of view the fundamentals when we when we entered into exclusivity didn't really change during um or yeah, after crisis or when the crisis started, so we were really convinced that we are uh, about the market, mm -hmm. and um, as mentioned, uh, we saw that this, the um, exactly this building was or exactly the, the profile we we are targeting is. Uh, we we found also in in the in the building we, we are purchasing. So that's why it was not really a question for us. Are we stopping or, or are we waiting or not? So we decided to move forward and uh, to follow our strategy. And yeah, and we are more happy that we did it um, mm -hmm. because it gave us also the opportunity to purchase buildings and uh, to, um, yeah, to be very active during a quite challenging year. But uh, this leads us to a, a, a good success. Super. Well, thank you very much. Um, to go a little bit more into detail, um, as we know each other a little bit, I know that you're very focused on specific asset classes. Uh, maybe you could tell us a bit more on uh, uh, what uh, kind of asset classes you're looking at. And again, I would have the same question to you. But I think I already know the answer because you explained it before. Um, if uh, your approach on asset classes has uh, uh, has changed with COVID, or uh, uh, whether you uh, still remain very focused as you are on the office market. Um. Yeah. I mean, for sure, we are we are still looking on the office market, and we are in in general we are we are investing in office in retail in logistics and in hotels and i mean we all know that <laughs> um, the retail uh, sector struggled already before covid so mm -hmm. and um, for sure we know that the logistic market is is really under pressure and there is a lot of demand so i mean this is maybe the big winner of of the crisis um we saw the yields dropping by 100 basis points within several months. So uh, a really crazy uh, movement. Um, but for sure, we are we are still looking. We are still looking um, um, uh, to purchase hotels and uh, also um, retail. But for sure, I mean, we are trying to find um, opportunities which meet our investment criteria. Mm -hmm. And for mm -hmm. office, for sure, I mean, we are looking for core opportunities and this, it means we are looking in big metropolitan, uh, metropolitan regions. Mm -hmm. So, um, and like London, Amsterdam, and for sure Paris. Okay, thank you very much. Why, why do you, because we, we know that some investors are looking indeed at uh, sub-markets or B locations um, because they think that they can uh, achieve a higher yield in such uh, B locations because the, the yields might be a bit lower in, uh, on core uh, uh, locations and big cities. But as you said, you are quite focused on on big cities on metropolitan areas could you maybe share with us uh, the advantages that you that you see when investing in 
in such metropolitan areas? Um, yeah, I mean, for us, this is definitely the, uh, the, um, the fact that those locations are less volatile than others. Mm -hmm. um, and this is exactly what the crisis um, also proved. Um, we saw that prices and yields for secondary locations rise a lot, um, and dropped a lot during the crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, sure. the one in in the prime location in big uh, in big cities remain or even drop. The mm -hmm. yields even drop, so the prices rise. <clears throat> Um, I mean, for sure, this is not only an effect of the crisis. It's also <laughs> an effect of of the of the um, low interest rates we have and the um, um, money uh, policy of the European Central Bank and the and the Fed that um, we see the pressure on, uh, on real estate. Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, I think. Today, it's very important to secure value, and this mm -hmm. is um, this is yeah. It's more likely that you can secure value by investing in 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 mm. big cities with um, uh, with good uh, in, in locations with good public transportation with um, with uh, long term leases or mm. yeah. The infrastructure, stable, stable, stable income, yeah, yeah. stable income then um, for cities or for places. Sure, I mean the the upside is maybe bigger, but for sure the risk is also bigger. And for yeah. us uh, as an investor and for, as Deca, we we are always looking for more stable and secured and less risky investments. Yeah, you want to have assets that are in a position to survive crises and that, that could maintain the value even though we, we, we live through a quite specific time in our lives. Yeah, for sure. And, and, for secure, and to secure uh, value. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you mentioned before uh, that uh, you are open to look at various asset classes. Um, one thing that is quite a la mode in, in France currently is that uh, major players, insurance companies, but also investment funds are, uh, are uh, looking at residential investments under various forms uh, as pure residential packages uh, or uh, to uh, uh, use them as co-living uh, uh, buildings where indeed a new way of living together is uh, is put in place. Is that something that Deca is also looking for? Um, yeah, um, in an indirect way. I mean, we have a joint venture partner who is investing for us and um, in residential as well. But we, uh, as we are acting for our funds, our funds they are only investing in in commercial real estate. retail exactly yeah. logistics and hotel yeah okay super and um, um uh, maybe a question for you uh, because i know uh, we talked about this but i know that uh, the energy efficiency of the buildings is an issue that you are always looking at carefully mm -hmm. um how uh, 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 how would you measure it? Does do you look at buildings uh, with the will to improve the energy efficiency, or would you or do you uh, uh, try to acquire uh, buildings that already dispose of a very uh, uh, good performance in terms of energy efficiency? Yeah, um, we can do both, or mm -hmm. we are doing also both. Um, the only thing is, which is important is that um, that uh, the building has the fundamentals to uh, and uh, to be improved mm -hmm. so that the um, environmental efficiency uh, can be can be uh, improved by a refurbishment or 
the management and so on. So mm. this is, um, but for sure, I mean, and this is this is this is really key for us, and this is also already for for a long for um, many years mm. that we are only investing in mm. certified buildings or mm -hmm. buildings where we do have the opportunity to improve. Um, mm. Mm. Yeah, the efficiency. It's, it, and this is not only important for us <coughs> as an investor, um, and or for the for the uh, for the tenants. I think this at the moment, and I think also the crisis speed it up. It touches um, all the yeah, all, all the all the parts of the of the society and the government and so on. And, and um, for especially, and we are happy that we that. Uh, we are doing this for many years already, because uh, what we what we saw, is for and, and you know this, uh, in, in France, for example, I mean the government is requesting this from from the landlords. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter who's who is paying for it. Yeah. So who yeah. the cost? It's you have to to um, to prove that within the next ten years you are improving the efficiency of your building by forty percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is something. This is an obligation now, and I think it will become more and more important. And uh, yeah, so um, that's why I think that, especially in 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 big cities and in capitals like in Paris and in London, Berlin, Amsterdam, mm -hmm. you will be faced with this uh, within the next years even more. So you consider that the. Uh... ESG aspects uh, will uh, uh, will uh, become uh, uh, more important in the coming years, and uh, become uh, like that one of um, more important investment criteria for you as well. If I understand correctly, it already is important for you. But do you think that this will, by the market, even uh, uh, more uh, uh, be? Uh, put forward that uh, uh, also maybe vis-a-vis -vis your investors that they are also keen on on showing that they are invested in energy friendly buildings mm. and and that they participate in a strategy um, uh, where they have an impact a social impact uh, uh, with the building they, that they acquire. Yeah, yeah I mean. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not only an isolated goal for us. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. it's a part of our strategy. So, mm -hmm. and for for as mentioned, for many years already. So this is something. I mean, for sure. I mean, it is already very important. And uh, as mentioned, I mean, we we, we have we we saw this, and uh, I mean, the discussions they are all over. Yeah. So yeah. We have, um, the responsibility of each sector is so important, and. Um, the real estate sector uh, takes a big portion of it. Yeah. So, um, and that's yeah, why we, in construction or um, building management and all of this. So, um, I think it, it will, it is already very important. And for us, um, it's an it's an obligation. So, yeah, this is not a question anymore. And uh, this is, yeah, as mentioned, this is an obligation. You, you mentioned the building management. Maybe <clears throat> I can just pick up on that um, because uh, it shows the, uh, the major role that technology is maybe playing uh, in the management of the building. I know that you uh, 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 in France uh, have uh, uh, concluded a framework agreement with a technological company for um, collecting the data of the of the building um, do you see uh, technology uh, uh, playing a major role in the years to come and if that's the case uh, in, in what way do you, could you let us share your view with us um, yeah I mean for sure technology will will help us in um, in a, in, in a to to achieve our goals that this is for sure i mean i'm maybe i'm not so deep in the, all the uh technological innovation to to uh see what exactly we can do or what exactly um yeah. 
is is possible to manage. But what we what we saw, and this is exactly, I think this is what we what we meant is that um, it's possible really to um, to manage a building or to control uh, uh, the building uh, through a um, yeah. Uh, yeah, through, um, through software through, yeah. to to really uh, it be uh, absolutely yeah. <laughs> the platform and and to improve um yeah the efficiency in a completely different way which is absolutely not impo uh, not possible uh if this will be done by by um uh, by a building manager so for sure i mean technology and uh is is always um is in, in helping and improve uh yeah in, I in, think in this regard, also, so yeah. we will see what will come yeah. up in the next years. But for sure, Dika is in, uh, always in uh, exchanging with all the market market participants in order to understand and to see uh, what kind of opportunities uh, they are and what uh, is yeah is helping us. Because yeah, I mean, we know the portfolio is huge. Yeah. And uh, for sure, that technology is is, is key at the moment, and it, it will always be. I think we have seen it in the in the past years that what you mean that technology is really helping us because we we needed to adjust and uh, couldn't really travel that much and I think we have all become very um, it's true. video conference pros um, <laughs> and uh, uh, you have also done several deals uh, without being present meaning you have signed them um, from Germany, even though you were acting on French assets. Um, uh, sorry for this personal question, but I know you really like your sector. How much do you miss uh, traveling <laughs> and, and seeing the buildings? Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, sure, I, I do miss it, and I think it's 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 important. I think it's also possible to to do uh, our our business. Um, I mean, for a limited period of time, also remote. Uh, but I think that it's it's important to be on site to see um, how the the location, the building, and also um, the dynamic of of the cities. Yeah, mm -hmm. to see how how they how this is changing and because I mean when you're you know it from your from from uh, maybe from from Paris because I mean this is a huge city yeah I mean you are like traveling from your apartment to your to your office every day and you're like moving in this area every day but then you realize oh I haven't been in this part. Uh, of the city for a very long time, maybe for half a year, and a lot of cha things changed mm -hmm. um, uh, so yeah. quickly. So if you um, and um, I think that we will see this um, much more in in the, in the in the in the future because this will uh, become or will will speed up um, mm -hmm. because. Um, we know that the cities they will change a lot in in the in the future. For mm -hmm. example, um, when I heard that uh, Anne Hidalgo is planning that Paris become a 15-minute city, yeah. So yeah. we all know that people. I mean, it, sometimes it takes. It took me 90, 90 minutes to go from the city center of Paris to the airport. You know, mm -hmm. so. I need only 45 minutes to uh, to fly to Paris, but 90 minutes to go from the airport to the to the city center. Yeah. So this is, I think, um, all the innovation and infrastructure projects. Yeah, they they will speed up, and I think also the crisis and um, the pressure um, will um, yeah will have a big impact on this. Yeah, super. Thank you very much for for all your insight, uh, Svetlana. Uh, again, I um, recall that you are uh, in charge of the French market for Deca Immobilien, and it was really precious to have your view on uh, your investment strategy and your outlook also for the years to come. And um, I'm really looking forward to see you again in Paris and to see all the innovations and changes that have taken place in Paris. Thank you very much again.
<laughs> You're welcome. <laughs>